Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. Today, I'm actually wild camping. And that means two things. First of all, it means I get some very sorely needed woods therapy, very badly needed. Secondly, I have an opportunity to film some content for the channel. Oh, I don't even wanna go there. It's just been a crazy few months and I'm making the most of what time I've got. The sun's going down, so I'm gonna make me a little supper. And if you watched my Grand Monkeys video, you saw that I used my new uh, Firebox Scout stove as a twig stove. Worked, worked fine. Uh, the only issue was we had a lot of wind and I didn't have my windshield with me. I hadn't really planned on going there. So with this video, I'm gonna be using my Trangia gas stove with it. I'm gonna be using that to make my supper. And then for lunch tomorrow, I'm going to use my Trangia alcohol burner to make my lunch. Um, so that way I, I've used three potential fuel sources. I still have charcoal. I still have a wood pellets that I want to try, but in this video, I'm going to try the gas stove and the alcohol stove. Now, like I said, tonight I'm going to be using the gas burner setup, and I'll get that set up here in just a second, but I'll show you what's on the menu. I'm going to have some cheese tortellini. This was one of the budget uh, field ration packs that I made. Um, I'll, I'll put the link uh, in the descri description box you to check that out it seems to be pretty popular um, and I'm going to have some retort packaged meatballs with that so it's gonna be a pretty good hearty meal let's go get things started get some stuff out of the way here get the stove out the things I won't be needing out of here. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. <laughs> that was almost bad. I need two of these pens and I was like, uh-oh, there's just one. It fell on the ground. Okay, so that's a good thing. I will need these. And put the Firebucks up on the stove. I have a folding metal uh, camp table that I'm going to be using to cook on. And one of the issues I had with um, the cooking process when I was using it as a twig stove was the wind. I remember to bring my windshield. So we'll go ahead and get this hooked up. Got my Trangia gas burner. This has definitely proven its weight uh, with multiple outings that I've had with different types of stove setups and I absolutely love it uh, including my Trangia cook set which is absolutely phenomenal I got one of these great little uh, adapters for propane and uh, I will go ahead and see I think I'm going to put it on this first and oh wait Got to run it through the hole first. Now the hole on this is a little smaller than the, the G2 stove, but it goes through pretty easily. And put that right on there. Nice and snug. I'm going to get my pins in place. locations for it. If not, I'll just fix it real quick. Nope. One over. See, that's the thing when you have no time and you're trying to create content for YouTube, you get things pretty raw. And uh, this week is going to be pretty raw. Yep. I need that on the other side of the hose. Thank you. 
I'm just so thankful to be out. It's, it's, it's been killing me. There we go. Nice and locked into position. Fuel bottle on. Make sure I got that turned off. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to be using my billy can uh, to boil the water for uh, the tortellini. And also, I'm going to just put the retort uh, pack inside the uh, boiling water as that's going to heat it up and then pour a liter of water in the uh, billy can and get my supports on here optimize that space between the bottom of the billy can and the burner get that in here there we go, it's locked into place now. I'll go ahead and light that burner. And I don't know if you've seen these or not. This is my little cook kit. But Bic now makes these little stem lighters. These things are absolutely a la bomb. And definitely helps out when you're using any type of a gas stove or anything like that. Get this up here. And we're going to go ahead and put the windshield up because we're getting a little breeze. And that should be at a boil at no time whatsoever. easier when you use this on the ground because you have little pins that you can stick in. Just in case you were worried about it, the propane tank, right here, my hand's there, not enough heat to worry about, and I don't have enough windscreen to go all the way around and block the wind coming from here and blocking this. So this is nice and cold. You can see how close my hand is. It's not getting the heat. So don't worry about it. Okay, folks, as you can see, we have come to a boil. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Or at least low. Very low. While I put the other stuff in. I know a lot of you may be thinking, <laughs> dude, you're just so weird um, for putting the retort pouch in the boiling water with the tortellini. Well, let me tell you, there are going to be times to where you are not going to have a large quantity of water available to you. So you have to make your water last as long as you possibly can. Now, I'm not going into it any further than that. I mean, you guys do things the way you do things. I do things the way I do things. And I'm good with that. I'm good with that. And uh, if uh, the way I do things upsets you, well, <laughs> you know what? That's just one of those things, folks. Just one of those things. You know, as far as nutrition and stuff like that goes, I've had uh, quite a few comments about how horrible my nutrition information is on the channel. Well, my nutrition information does not involve my actual life, okay? I don't eat at home the way I eat in the field. And... Uh, 
I eat the way I eat in the field because I want the highest amount of energy I can possibly get to do the things that I need to do in the outdoors. And uh, if, if that's, you know, if that's odd, <laughs> I don't know why it would be. But um, I have had a few comments about that and just rest assured folks, I do understand proper nutrition um, <laughs> and all the aspects, but I also understand what I need to have when I am in the woods. And um, high calories, fat is good when you're in the woods. Good fat, not trans fat or anything else. Natural fat is absolutely fantastic for you for short terms in the woods. If you're worried about cholesterol and things like that, well, don't eat high cholesterol foods all the time. Eat them once in a while, you'll be fine, folks. Your body is an amazing work of art and it can do some absolutely spectacular things. I need to time this for about 18 to 20 minutes and uh, that'll be that for that. But folks, rest assured, I, I understand proper nutrition. I also understand what I need to have when I am in the woods. I you know, max out those carbs, max out the fat, max out the uh, protein. Uh, any combination I can get those things in, that's what I do, that's what I use. It's worked for me for years and I'm up there in years and I'm still out here kicking. I am not croaking. Okay, we're getting close to time. I'm going to test one of the tortellinis. Perfect. Time to drain it. This is another great thing about having uh, drilled the hole out in this for the thermometer for when I do baking, is it gives you a perfect pour spout to drain out things like pasta or anything else like that. Of course, these tortellini are not going to come out that little teeny tiny hole. You might have a little bit of problem with. Uh, you know, fine pastas, things like that, and uh, just let it do its thing. Whoop! <laughs> now that's not going in the bloopers. That's that's uh that's straight up in the video. I lost one, two, two tortellinis, three, but they aren't lost. Believe it or not, I'm gonna pick them up and rinse them off, and. I will eat them. Yes, John Thames, boondockery. The guy with horrible eating habits is going to pick things up off of the forest floor and consume them. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to finish draining this off. And it's time to serve. Well, bon appetit. None too soon because the sun is just about dipping over the treetops over there. I'm going to use my Wildo mess kit. Great little kit. One of these days I might make a video about it. Who knows? I'll go ahead and put the tortellini in there. Including the three that hit the ground. Oh, look at that. That looks good. Even with those natural minerals and vegetation that may actually be on them. So, does it seem like I'm getting a little edgy? <laughs> oh, lordy. Folks, if you only knew the uh, comments I get on any and everything, and I don't claim to be an expert. I'm just some guy. I just, you know, this is what I do. I've done it for a long time, and I've enjoyed it. 
and I just, you know, I wanted to share it with you guys. And, um, whoa, <laughs> you would think that people were paying for this stuff, you know. I'd be pretty upset if I bought a premium channel on a Roku or something like that, and I got some less than great stuff. But you know what? You can't even comment on that stuff. You can't even give that a thumbs down. But you know what? You can turn the channel. If you don't like what you're seeing, you can always watch something else. and um, Or watch nothing. I like that sometimes. I don't get a whole lot of time to watch much of anything, including YouTube. And, uh, but, you know, it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. But, uh, when I come out here and I shoot these videos and I try to enjoy myself and things like that, I've gotten to a point now to where I'm expecting. Um, <laughs> interesting comments that come up <clears throat> but it's all good it's all good it's all good and this supper is going to be fantastic tortellini oh wow ma'am what is that I don't know if I tore the... Oh! Hereford. H-E-R-E-F-O-R-D. Rippin' Ready Meatballs. Got them at a buck at the dollar store. The tortellini, cheese tortellini, on sale at Aldi's. 99 cents. I got two packages of these. They came in a, a, oh gosh, I think there were 12 of them in the package at Aldi's. They were two bucks. So you do the math there. So well under three bucks. I have one awesome, fantastic meal. Got to try one of these meatballs. Now the sauce is fantastic. That's an MRE meatball, but a lot more tender and a lot more meaty. <laughs> um, the MRE uh, meatballs that I had years and years ago, especially the meatballs and, and barbecue sauce, they, they were like highly compressed, dense balls of protein. I, I hope it was protein. <laughs> Don't really know, but... You know, for a buck, that's fantastic. You know, I eat very well at my home during the week. Um, healthy meals, my, my wife is a fantastic cook. Always has stuff from the garden. Um, good healthy food all week. And when I come out to the woods... Yes, I do want to focus on, you know, maximizing my calorie intake, um, fat. I know, especially when it's cold, is fantastic. I really cut back on the fat a good bit in the summer, but uh, carbohydrates are good. It's all good. And, um, but this kind of stuff is just flat out fun. It's fun. Um, I don't eat Vienna sausages. <laughs> very much at all but when I come to the field yeah I have Vienna sausages because you know what it reminds me of a time long ago when I was in the army and we would go and we would buy all kinds of what I called pogey bait at the time just easy quick food that was not sea rations or at one time, we had a really bad cook <laughs> in our troop, and our field chow was like, oh, oh, could I could I please have the, the uh, sea rations that no one wants? Uh, I, I would rather eat that. But you know what? 
Uh, it supplemented our, our food intake. It was currency. You could trade different food items you had for cigarettes, things like that. Um, guard duties. I mean, you could trade it for anything. It was currency. But it was just good. And um, this stuff right here, dollar food, uh, dollar store food, it, it, it's just fun. And it does taste good. If your palate is too refined for Vienna sausages or potted meat or sardines, things like that, you can't appreciate it. But um, given the time to where sardines was looking good compared to what you were going to be getting in a box and cans were looking pretty good compared to what they were going to bring out in mermites in the field. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Well, folks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy my meal here. And um, I'll bring you back tomorrow for lunch when I do the... Uh, firebox stove with the alcohol burner and I really really hope that there's enough room in there to finally adjust that simmering on there to get my cooking done the way I want it well folks um, this is getting pretty close to dark for me I don't know how it looks on the camera but uh, I wish you good night and I'll see you tomorrow morning folks few things I want to go over before uh, we get into trying the alcohol burner and the uh, firebox scout stove. First of all, for whatever reason, <laughs> I apparently just, you know, felt the need to turn into Salty Skipper last night while I was eating. And although all of my complaints and statements were valid, uh, I probably didn't handle it. And the... Uh, the best of ways now considering that most of you subscribe is because you say you relate to me you like me well welcome to me folks uh, I got I have a little bit of that humanity too and I do from time to time get irritated uh, with certain things especially with all of the stress and everything I've been going through over the past several months um, <laughs> I, I guess it all just sort of bleh, uh, got out there uh, last night. But I had a great night sleep in my hammock last night. It was so wonderful. Uh, last night, we're at about a three-quarter uh, full moon, three-quarter moon. And I was able to go all over the place in the forest last night with no headlamp, no light whatsoever. All the leaves are still off the trees, so that, that beautiful moon just illuminated everything. And I, just because it was so different and so wonderful and so rare uh, for me to be able to get out anymore, I just walked around. I just walked around and just looked at everything. It was just wonderful. It was just the perfect calming thing I could do before I got in my hammock last night. But anyway... Uh, Salty Skipper will not be returning today. <laughs> and uh, But there are a couple uh, things I wanted to point out about the stove. First of all, these little stem lighters. These are absolutely fantastic. And uh, I was making some hot cocoa last night. I had everything still hooked up, so I decided to fire it up. And with a regular lighter, you turn on the stove, the burner, you light it, and poof! See, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. It just poof and uh, knocks your lighter out of here. Not really. But um, anyway, I uh, got this brilliant idea. I have this little miniature stem lighter. I'll just stick it right in there like that. Light it. Make sure it's lit. Look at that. No poof. My lighter stayed in my hand, it didn't go flying. But anyway, those right there, those are very uh, common now. Uh, when I first bought mine, uh, you could only find them in a few certain places, but now they're selling them all over the place. Uh, that might be something you wanna throw in your kit. The other thing I wanted to point out 
was this. And I'm going to bring you in closer to see it. Now, I wanted to point this out to you. Uh, this morning, I, I was making my coffee, and I noticed that there is a lot of deformity on the rim of the stove. And it's not just here. It's not just mouth-shaped here. There are dips here. There's a dip here. Uh, there's a dip over here. I mean, it's... <laughs> there's a lot of deformity here that I did not expect to see. Now, if you remember when I was uh, doing my, my filming yesterday, uh, when I adjusted that to get it started, I only turned half a turn. So the, the heat being generated by the transit wasn't anywhere close to what it could have been. And um, so it was just like about a half a turn to get that lit. And I didn't, I didn't turn the heat up after that. And I had these elevation rods up here and um, to keep you know, the pot up off of it. So heat was coming out between the rim and the bottom of the pot so the heat wasn't being trapped inside along the rim if I were to set the, the pot straight on top. Um, I think that the deformity would have been much greater had I done that. But I just wanted to point that out um, because, I mean, this is an issue. This is an easy fix. I mean, I, I can bend that back into place a little bit, but, um, you know, th this, this could be an issue for some people. Uh, something I, I think you definitely need to know about before you purchase it and um, you know just something to consider while you're there to me it's not an issue but it's definitely noticeable and as time goes by uh, and if I see additional metal fatigue like uh, the, the deformation becomes greater faster then that definitely is going to be an issue because I want to use this in every possible way, not just with twigs. I didn't have any issue at all with it being a twig stove. So that's just one thing I wanted to point out to you guys. And uh, so you, you can see this, so you can aware of that just in case you were considering purchasing these things. This is one issue that you are now aware of and you can take that into consideration uh, before you decide to purchase it or not purchase it. We're good and set up the um, Scout stove with the alcohol burner and first thing we need to do is get our pins in place Remove the simmer ring So now that's in there. That's a. Uh, it's not snug, snug, but it, it definitely. I mean, it holds it in okay. Put a little alcohol in there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put my. lifting rods in there and since this has deformed that's a, a little more of a challenge than what it was before now if by any chance you don't have one of these handy dandy little stem lighters just use any old twig stick it in there there we go she's lit Now it's going to take just a, a few minutes to get that to where it's yuking, and then we'll put the water in. I'm just going to uh, heat up water for a mountain house meal. And there's no wind, but just in case some picks up, i got my, my windshield there. And everything else is in place. While the water's uh, heating up, ready to come to a boil, a couple things I want to show you. Um, preparing anything that you need to do measurements with out in the field. Um, this GSI travel cup, camp cup, is absolutely fantastic. 
Um, uh, I, I bought the very first generation and believe me this has really come a long way the insulation's much better you have a much better handle on that um, which is pretty nice uh, the lid fits better and uh, it's just a, a tighter seal but the thing that gets me more this is definitely a tighter seal is the graduations they are uh, designed to be viewed from the inside and especially you're preparing mountain house meals and things like that that require a certain amount of water you can measure it perfectly in these and to be able to pour that in and since it's not metal it's not glass it doesn't retain the heat and so it's, it's a lot cooler and it will cool down much faster and then you just go ahead and put it back together and wait for your coffee water to heat up if you're going to be doing that. The other thing is this. This is a mountain house koozie. I've made quite a few of these things over the past couple years. And it's basically made of Reflectix. And it is a pouch for you to be able to put your freeze-dried meal in once you uh, put your water in to reconstitute them. You seal it up with a Ziploc and put it in your little koozie or cozy. I mean, we, we call them koozie where I'm from. I've heard people call them cozies. And you let it sit for its amount of time. Keeps it super, super hot. And the nice thing about this one is I put little webbing loops on there for you to be able to keep your spoon on there and uh, if you have a spork you can put it over there so that way you can access it whenever you need it and when you are ready to eat just put the lid right around to the back and you open up your mountain house meal and you can eat it right out of the koozie uh, these right here I have a video on how to make these uh, if you want to check that out, I uh, did it quite a while ago. Uh, this is actually a, a second generation of the first one I made. And uh, this one is very durable, will last a very long time, and it's just a much better design. Anyway, just wanted to show you those two things that I use frequently when I go out. And um, these right here are absolutely fantastic accessories if you use any type of freeze-dried meals. Okay, we have a cheese boil, and the, the time um, for this to achieve a boil is no, no greater than uh, the uh, time that you would have on any of your other alcohol stoves. And, uh, okay, so that's extinguished. I have a little bit of a hole in my glove. So I got my fangy just a little bit, not too bad. Time to invest into a new pair of gloves it looks like. Okay, put these in the pocket for the moment. And get our mountain house meal ready. I do not care for these newer packages. Uh, they aren't as well insulated. They aren't as made as made as well. And uh, the, the older style, I've actually saved a bunch of them, and I will actually empty these into Ziplocs, divvy them out into single servings because this is a two serving, and I'll put uh, one serving in one Ziploc bag, one serving in another Ziploc bag, and I'll use the old style bags to uh, reconstitute them. Okay, now we need to measure out our water. Put the gloves back on. This calls for a cup and a half. So that's going to be 12 ounces. And exactly 12 ounces. Good stir. Okay. And 
close that up. Nice and sealed. Put that in my freeze dried meal koozie. Close it up, and in five minutes, I'm going to re stir it, put it in for another five minutes, and it'll be done. Well, folks, it's chow time. So, between my Grand Monkeys video and the end of this one, I will have tried the Scout Stove, the Firebox Scout Stove, as a twig stove as a gas stove and as an alcohol stove and so far all of them have worked just fine nothing exceptional as a matter of fact the, uh, the gas stove thing um, presented some issues with uh, the deformation of the rim and uh, definitely something I'm going to need to keep an eye on because if I continue to use that and Gradually, it creates metal fatigue to where when I go to straighten it out again, it begins to crack. That, that's going to be a big issue. That's, that'll be a big issue for me. And if that ever occurs, you'll definitely know that I'm going to let you know about it. Uh, but all in all, um, it was a gift for uh, Christmas. But considering the price, um, I still think it's worth it. And it's right around 25 bucks. So uh, it's, it's pretty good. Well, let's see how my chow turned out it's one thing about these these koozies is like wow they definitely keep the food piping piping hot mm. Mm. very good nothing like good hot meal on a very cold morning well folks Hopefully you enjoyed uh, your time with Boondockery and uh, Salty Skipper uh, testing out a couple more features on the uh, Firebox Scout Stove. I definitely have enjoyed my time doing it and um, maybe these will be uh, a couple little morsels of food for thought if you're considering purchasing this stove and uh, hopefully uh, it's uh, in some way, shape, shape or form. Uh, helped inform you a little bit more about the stove well folks as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time folks if you like today's video i'd appreciate a thumbs up and if you like what's going on with the channel and you've not already subscribed i'd appreciate you cons considering to do so and um, as always if any of the information that i share on my videos happen to be um, informative to the point to where you think someone you may know might get a little bit of information from that that they could use please uh, consider uh, sharing these videos with others and always comment uh, the past uh, several months have been really rough on me personally and uh, it's really dwindled my time tremendously but <laughs> I'm still plodding along uh, reading every single comment and replying to every single comment uh, all the recent videos that's been going on, I answer those first and then I go back and try to get into replying to the older backlog of comments. But eventually, I'll get there. Folks, I appreciate your support and I always appreciate the kind words that you have for me in the comments. Those, those mean a lot to me. Uh, some of the comments aren't so great sometimes, but... The ones that you guys, you know, really put your heart and soul into, make it all worthwhile. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you. Seeing my wood smoke or, you know, and that means two things. One thing, I get woods therapy. Desperately. Good morning, folks. Uh, a few things I want to... Uh, double check here and make certain that I have the right spacing here nope 